All over the world, the impact or otherwise of the actions of those in position of authority on the lives of those they govern has remained a subject of public discourse. Often time, societies measure good governance on the basis of the positive impact the actions of leaders have on the people. In Nigeria, issues of governance and its attendant impact on the life of the people has remained as topical and even as controversial as the many fault lines plaguing the country. The entire essence of governance is to meet the needs of the people and the people elect their leaders into government. And so it's imperative that those who have been elected by the people should satisfy the people. I expect those in charge of uh, governance to focus on the overall interest of the nation. The story of governance in Delta State in the past four years of the Governor Ifanyo Kowa led administration has been replete with many success stories. And this has been traced to his people oriented governance philosophy. Besides regularly seeking the face of God in all his actions, Governor Kowa, at inception of his administration, rolled out a master plan codenamed SMART that sought to address the many development challenges that confront the different segments of the state. He made a series of promises, that which he termed uh, a smart agenda, and uh, beautifully he was able to make an impact on infrastructure. It's access road, that has greatly made an impact. We we'll talk of development in Delta State here, everywhere he's walking, he's touching people's hearts, doing, making sure that everybody is living at, at least normal. Uh, he knows the feeling of people from the grassroots. What became quite handy to Governor Kowa was his understanding of the physical geography and social demography of the state. Prior to becoming the governor of the state, Senator Ifanyo Kowa held several positions of immense responsibility during which he had close interactions with the grassroots across the diverse ethnic groups in the state. This clear understanding helped to shape the five-point development agenda of the administration. Leadership is something you don't buy it. He prepared for this job. He's somebody that has passion to serve the state. That's why you can see that a lot of progress today. Was His Excellency prepared for this job? Very prepared. He had the basic training. He had executive experience from the grassroots to the state level and then went to the city, the national level. So he had legislative experience. He knows the issues of lawmaking already. He knows the issues of executing. For me, as governor, round peg in a round hole. Governor Kowa realized quite early in his administration the need to pursue peace on all fronts. This knowledge of the pivotal role of peace and harmony in the development of societies propelled Governor Kowa to constitute the Professor Sam Onyewari Advisory and Peace Building Council. The council provided a platform for experience sharing and promotion of harmonious inter-ethnic relationship. Violence never brings any solution. Dialogue has been a paramount key. When he comes in, he, he saw it that there's, there's many diversification, there are many persons seeing themselves as different ethnic groups. So when he brings in the peace committee, the first thing he does is to bring everybody together. And one thing that is very paramount with this present government is this. He does everything across. So I believe in the governor for his dialogue mentality and dialogue will always bring results. Delta State is made up of different uh, Isoko, Robo, uh, Shakiri, Ijo. If they don't work together, things will not move forward. For creating that forum where all the tribes are brought together and then they try to streamline things. I think it's a welcome idea. People should praise him for that. There is peace here. Businesses are going on smoothly in Delta State without any obstruction. He is doing fine pertaining to security. It is very easy. If you want to destroy this uh, filling station, now you destroy it one day. But to build it, it will take you months, years. That is what Okowa is trying to do. Correcting the past mistakes. The pursuit for a more peaceful delta led Governor Kowa to set up a high-powered advocacy committee led by the Deputy Governor, Kingsley Burutu Otuaro, and saddled with the mandate to interface with all oil bearing and coastal communities. All we did was to advocate and engage critical sections of our people through constructive engagement. We can have 
stakeholders who listen to us. That's talking about the government, the transnational oil companies. Because we are inseparable with our people, they had cause to listen to us. And by God's grace, we are able to restore peace. He's a peace-loving governor. His attitude has reflected on the behavior of the people. And therefore, since he came on board, we have been enjoying relative peace in brutal local government. We thank God that uh, these militants, uh, there is no more restiveness in riverine areas. The committee they set up for the past two, three years now, there have not been any crisis. And the governor is trying on his own horse to keep this working in the state concerning the issue of peace. There has been peace and harmony in Delta State. We are grateful to God. And they say when the righteous is on the throne, the people rejoice. Delta State people are rejoicing as of now. Another key factor behind the giant development strides of Governor Kawa is the regular interface with the traditional institution in the state. We, the traditional rulers, are particularly happy because of the particular attention he has given to traditional rulers in the state. And because of that, uh, we are doing our best to make our respective kingdoms peaceful so that his government can operate in a conducive atmosphere. In some other government, before you can see them, you need to pass a lot of protocols. But I think in his own case, he's very open-minded. And that's why we pray for him every day. We would just want to say special thanks to His Excellency uh, for bringing peace for seeing here. He has come and a lot of uh, traditional rulers, they knew him perfectly. They stand by him to support him in different ways and uh, because they believe in him, it's a new data. You can see smiles in a lot of people's face uh -huh, because in before, you cannot walk too late at night, but now you can walk at least up to 12, 1 o'clock. The desire to have a clearer understanding of the yearnings and aspirations of the people propelled the governor to convoke town hall meetings with the people. And the interface opened his eyes to what the people truly want, not what government wants to do for them. At the town hall meetings, all manner of opinions were canvassed. The labor leaders, market women, mechanics, traditional rulers, just all shades of opinion in the local government were brought up in the town hall, even as people spend the whole day talking about what they feel, what they need vis-a-vis -vis what government is doing and what could be done better. The town hall meeting, this is an opportunity in everyone here to speak their mind and ask the governor whatever we need and the, I believe the governor will attend to every one of us here and he, this is a medium for we to speak our mind. I want to commend your efforts on becoming the governor of our state. We have not only had, but we have seen the numerous projects you have embarked upon and the various appointments you have given to our sons and daughters in the state. I want you, that intent you have to do this role, to know that people are existing here. I want you to also use that intent to do a focus support of international standard that will generate about 2.5 billion US dollars annually. When you came for the tower meetings, you told us about three things if I'm not mistaken. You said, one, you are not going to tell us what you cannot do. That alone made us give so much respect for you. We thought it's going to be business as usual when politicians will come and tell us stories. I will connect, worry to future, I will do this, I will do that. They said, no, I don't want to tell you things that I will not do. But I assure you, I will come back and commission the two internal events. Indeed, you have come and you have commissioned that in one state, we are grateful. As far as the leaders here appreciate what is being done, it is a hope that we can take it a little better. You have asked for an extra one kilometer of road, to what we have started, we really need to complete it. We've gone around most of the places, almost every place are yet to be paid. Uh, so when you give the information to the Commissioner for Urban Renewal, who is working here, as far as if we have the information, we'll see how we can handle that. In some places, they offered advice on what they feel the administration needed to do. 
People took time to come and express themselves and what they want, even in the difficult times when local government workers were being owed salaries. They spoke their minds. The way salaries are paid, it's expected that this money is part of the salaries paid. So I don't see how government has paid salaries and their money is held back in the form of checks, one, two, three, four months. I want to appeal to the executive governor to equally support the private sector driven development of industrial park. If any amount, no matter the size, give it to corporators in this state, we go a long way to help the masses. You raise some other issues. We'll try to see what we can do, but in terms of capacity building for small business owners, I, I, that, that is very interesting for me. And I think that that is the way commerce and industry should actually be going. I'll be glad to receive a memo in this that kind of direction. I, anything that is good is good. It's, it's a wonderful suggestion you have brought. We've not had um, this opportunity before. So for the governor to have put something like this in place, that means he really want to carry people like us along. Whenever the governor goes around for town hall meetings, uh, people at the grassroots are able to express themselves freely without any ambitions. The town hall meetings and the wide consultations made governments to embark on projects that are tailor-made to suit the yearnings of the people. The biggest impact of the administration on account of wide consultation could be traced to the decision to take development to the riverine areas of the state. The government was able to take development to the riverine areas, which was something most leaders would not do because of the difficult terrain and high cost of projects in the creeks. I'm impressed with these activities. For a very long time, Rutu has never had this kind of uh, rural road networks. He came and commissioned five road projects in Brutu town itself. It's quite encouraging and the secondary school that he completed it's a very great job. He has done very well and people are happy with him. The governor has been able to embark on projects in communities that appears neglected. Some of them were major oil producers. He has boosted the economy of those places by putting roads there like to Botubu 1, to Botubu 2 and all. And these communities are very much economically viable and it will definitely boost the economic status of these communities. Delta State, what we have is participatory governance. The people through our town hall meetings regularly identify things government should do. In the process, government has had calls to direct the relevant ministries and departments to help deepen democracy in Delta State. For me, in Delta State, the citizens have been given an opportunity to really participate, to contribute in the running of the government of the day. Smart Delta. <laughs> Hi, my name is Fretless, and I live in Asaba, capital city of Delta State. As an entertainer, my job entails a lot of movement from one place to the other, and also to be at the right place at the right time, meaning that I need good roads to be able to meet up with work or appointments. And with the new government reform on construction and rehabilitation of all major and feeder roads in the state as part of a smart agenda, it has become so easy for me to move around at all times. Now, I just cruise from street to street, city to city, all over the state. And even apart from the roads as I move along daily, I see magnificent projects everywhere. Check out this one in Worry and several other places. Wow. Governor Koa is indeed a man with a vision. Come see empowerment through the step and the again. Get your education and sports development. That's why they don't know they carry last at all. Who they bring the peace? Communities and the creeks. If we stop on drainage, to carry water to the river. Port of healthcare, housing and agriculture. Prosperity, prompt payment of salaries. Let the people they happy with the coa. Coa no the kaya. Every day he dey work, even job creation, water provision. Every day collect with the coa. Another glaring fact behind the many successes recorded by the administration of Governor Ifanyo Koa is the realization that the youths have to be taken off the streets. Having realized that job creation was important, the first thing Governor Koa did was to set up a team several months before the 2015 elections. 
since we can't just continue to engage in public service, is to get people to have their mind retrained, refocused, take them through entrepreneurial skills, ensure that you're able to provide them with all the startup pack and things they need to start and continue to mentor them. It has really empowered so many youths to have their own enterprise and everything. That at least so many girls and boys can stand on their own that this is my place, I am training this, I am training that. All started from Okowa's administration, so I'm so pleased with it and I'm so happy with it. I commend Okowa for his empowerment programs. And that's one thing that every governor should strive to do. If you empower people, it's far better than just employing people to give them money. Just like they say, it's better to teach someone how to fish than to give the person fish. To a large extent, the administration is doing well. The transparency that characterized the job creation process and the governance style further engendered the people's trust and hence the support for the administration grew in leaps and bounds. The openness Governor Koa brought to bear on governance in the state dealt a big blow to the language of ethnicity and hence diversity was no longer there as every Delton began to think alike. Koa's style is to bring everybody into what he's doing. His style is to reach out to as many people as possible. As you climb the different levels of the state, it then makes it easier for people from Delta Central to accommodate people from Delta South and Delta North. I am not from this state, but I am Okowa diehard fan. Okowa has done well. He has done more than my own state governor. If I have my way, I will say Okowa should be the governor for life. The spread of road projects across the three senatorial districts has helped to cement the bond of unity amongst the people, even as the many road networks brought beauty to the communities. The governor is a good listening governor. He's a friendly governor. And there is virtually nothing the governor do in the state without consulting the people that are concerned. Judging with what we saw before he came in, there was no road to villages where we walk. But today, as I'm speaking with you, virtually all the road has been connected. He has done so much. He's a good listener and he's a road master. He has done so many roads in all the 25 local governments of Delta State. He's a good governor. Governor Fanyo Kowa has continued to maintain a healthy and very cordial relationship with the state legislature. And this has made it possible for executive bills and appointments to sail through with ease. We are lucky in Delta State because what you have is a situation where there is mutual respect among the hands of governments. Uh, you have a governor, Dr. Ifan Yokoa, a parliamentarian in his own right, with rich background in the executive and the parliament. I mean, uh, somebody that functions even as secretary to government, knowing very well how to relate with the parliamentarians. Since I got into the parliament, the appropriation law has been passed on time as I went due and spending for the good of our people follow almost immediately. Getting the state annual budgets quickly prepared and passed, as well as being able to manage the state's funds in a more equitable manner, also contributed to the milestones of the administration. This, of course, is complemented by a good team that the governor sits down with and listens to properly. In the state's executive council, Governor Kowa discusses with members as colleagues. There is no question of a master-servant relationship. Our governor is very experienced in governance. And his experience has come to bear with a lot of us who served in the cabinet with him. He believes people will always have something to add, even when he has his own thinking where he's going. His patience, he listens, he teaches, and he advises. So when you look at the programs we're going to, in everything we have achieved in all the MDAs, his style of leadership helped us a lot. The same spirit of dialogue and wide consultation has also paid off in the relationship between the administration and organized labor. During the period of the recession, do you hear of any strike in Delta? There's even nothing like a walk to rule. Where you come, you sign and sit down, no job. 
We were doing our job. Not that we are getting all our pay. We were getting our salary, which is the next. Other deductions were set aside because we know as at that very period, money is not available to pay all the salaries. We met with him. We were the one who even suggested, Oga, you can afford to pay next. And that was how we were able to re go through the recession. So our relationship with him has been very cordial. He's an achiever. Ko has been a grassroots man. I won't serve from the various shame of government. He's somebody that uh, knows what labor is all about. So since the assumption of office as governor, we have never had any cause to regret having him as governor. So I would say that the relationship between government and labor has remained cordial. Since the inception of this government in 2015, they have not seen any strike. Because salaries are paid when it is due, allowances are paid when it is due, and of course, the relationship has become that of husband and wife, inseparable. Their towns are happy for it. They have good remunerations, even the minimum wage. The Excellency has said that it was long overdue, meaning that it has the interests of the laborers at heart. And the labor to work with the SLS in terms of discussion, in terms of diplomatic relationship, in terms of improving the states, there is a cordial working relationship. We have peace in labor government relation because labor can't afford to bite a government that listens to her 247. And the governor has planted so many seeds of relationship. Even before he came into the realm of affairs, being of areas has been a thing that appeared very difficult. But you can see that he took the bull by the arm and he paid areas. People thought it was a joke, but it happened, as you can see. The state is friendly and we are, we are happier for it. The state's head of service, Reginald Bioko, and the Commissioner for Economic Planning, Kingsley Emu, told Smart Delta Media that the harmonious relationship between the governor and by extension the executive arm of government and its workforce is further hinged on truth and fulfillment of obligations. For instance, he reveals that the government has sponsored huge numbers of civil servants for training in the higher institutions. Also, promotions, loans, payments of outstanding pensions, promise to comply with the new minimum wage of the federal government and other benefits have all been met by the Okoa-led administration to its workforce. This is fundamental and recipe for cordial work relationship. Delta State Government and the Labor Union have enjoyed a harmonious relationship and that's basically down to the level of uh, leadership display by His Excellency uh, our Governor. And I'll give you a very typical example. At the early stages of the administration where things economically were a bit difficult, the way His Excellency went about it was to engage labor fully and put the cards on the table. Let me have your suggestion on how we can proceed. And that singular act alone endeared uh, him to labor. He understands their language, he understands their psychology, and he also understands their pain. And communication, engagement has been a key solution to most of the challenges that we have. So you see him resolve a matter that looks largely intractable with labor. You see him resolve it with a lot of ease. We are one of the few states that are into contributory uh, pension scheme. And one of the few states sustaining it. The amount of money he paid out to labor, even within challenging period, is, is unimaginable. Before the Easter day, a salary has been paid. So the workers have a whole lot to celebrate, giving of car loan, giving of housing loan, promotions, appointment of permanent secretary, and what have you. Even labor leaders are being appointed as SA and senior special advisor and advisor to the governor of the state from the labor angle. I think the labor has a whole lot to celebrate. The effective delivery of projects based on equity and fairness has also paid off. The regular inspection of projects by Governor Kowa has made it possible for the projects to be delivered according to schedule. This is the first time I've seen a governor come every time to inspect his work, to actually know how the work is going. And uh, I commend that because when the contractor see the governor, on site, they are happier and you see them increase the pace of their work, which is what we are experiencing. Today, 
on account of the painstaking efforts by the governor, irrespective of where they live, the constant inspection of projects, and the prudent management of resources, Deltons are counting their blessings. His works are so enormous that we cannot just explain. His reasoning, the way he attends to every need, the way he listens to people, the way, I mean, he's just too much. Deltons have cause to thank God in the education sector, where many schools have been built and technical colleges totally revamped. Their joy on account of the many roads that now crisscross the state knows no bound. The youths are beaming with smiles as the sports and agri sectors have had good fortunes. Kowa try for us, so God bless Okowa for us, so Okowa is a goal. You can see that we are very smart. Nothing is hiding us, so. nothing can hide us from Okowa. Okowa is a goal.